And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the James Muralitre podcast. We are live streaming from Nairobi, Kenya. We have a, an, an exciting show today. Um, as we start, please remember that this show, this show is brought in partnership with the Frankfurter Bookmesser with financial support from the German Federal Foreign Office. And our guests today are really exciting. Um, we have Okechuku Ophili and Lena, Lena Reynolds. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. I know Okechuku, you have something to do with Okada and um, and Lena, you you have your own business. So maybe we start with the person closest to me. Ophili, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself in relation to our topic? Oh, yes. Uh, my name is Okechuku Ophili. I've been in the publishing industry for, I would say, 15 years. I self-published three books. I got published by Farafina for a children's book. And during that journey, I looked at the book distribution system in Nigeria, I realized it was broken. Um, and I tried to solve the break by leveraging on mobile devices. And that's what led to the creation of Okada Books, um, a mobile ebook reading platform that has over 400,000 registered users with 15,000 to 20,000 monthly active um, users. And we're looking to use mobile devices um, for the past five, six years to fix the broken distribution system. Thank you, Ophili. Uh, what about you, Lena? Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, um, I think the first thing I should maybe say is that I'm, a, I'm an American, um, grew up in New Jersey, near New York City, um, studied in um, Washington DC and in Germany and um, relocated to Germany, to Cologne, that's where I am now, in about 1994. And that's when I started working in the book business. Um, I'm on a little bit of a different side. Um, I did the vocational training to be a bookseller. And then I moved from there and worked in I'm a distributor, going then to sales and marketing in various different publishing houses here in Germany. Big ones like Cold Spring or smaller ones. And for the last six years, I have my own business doing sales and marketing for independent publishers, trying to get books to booksellers, to get them to the customers at the end. That's what I do. We have a Thank little you. bit different system here in Germany too, because our distribution system isn't broken like I just understood it is in Nigeria. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Lena. I mean, uh, Ophelia, maybe we start with you. You, you, t you talked about a broken system. Yeah. Um, well, what is happening? What, what is this broken system? And is it a Nigerian problem or is it an Africa problem? It's an African problem, but I always choose not to lump up the continent because each country is unique. And my um, sphere of experience is with the Nigerian system. Um, but I do believe that it reflects closely on, on the rest of Africa to, to a certain degree. Um, the best way I can explain it is that it's easier for you to buy a copy of Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart in Germany in America, in where, where else, UK, than it is to buy it in Nigeria, his own country. Um, and that is just um, an explanation of how bad I feel personally that the distribution system is. And it, it, it is basically, if you want to publish a book, um, we don't have so many bookstores and beyond the core city centers like Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt River State, um, you tend to not find an easy um, distribution system. Um, so that's why I say I feel it's it's broken. And even for us um, as Okada Books, we've tried to, you know, fix it with mobile technology. And based on my vision to the reality of what I'm seeing, I don't even think we scratched the surface. Um, we still have a long way to go. Okay, that's a that's a that's a really very good to know. Lina, the system you're in is not broken. So how does the system that's not broken look like? How does the book get from um, how does it get the book get from the publisher where it's just been, you know, they've just published the book and then suddenly everybody in, in all the cities in Germany have it? Yeah, um, our situation here in Germany is that we have about six thousand bookshops. Um, in almost every city you find a bookshop, um, sometimes two or three even, and 
most of these bookshops are really just for books also. They're, they're not like combinations with stationery or, or other things. So we have a whole different um, network that we can work with here. And um, the publishers, um, they bring out their programs about two times a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. And we have um, sales representatives that go out to the bookstores and talk to the books um, sellers and present them the programs and say which books are coming and stuff like that. And then the booksellers can buy the books from us or can um, order them from us at least. And then we can distribute the books directly from us to via our distributor to the booksellers. Um, this is one way of doing it. Another way that we can do it, which is very special if you're asking me about Germany, is that we have three wholesalers. And these three wholesalers have almost all the books that are available in Germany. And you can order them in 24 hours almost everywhere in germany almost everywhere and that's that's something really special because i know when i go back to the states and i want to buy a book that's not um not on the bestseller list it sometimes takes more than a week seven to ten days until i can get the book in the states and here in germany i can get really almost anything within 24 hours or three to four days if i have to order it directly from the publisher so this is really just a very, very special system that we have here. Um, the, the system seems to be like a really good system, but um, it can't have been a great system from the beginning. I know, like, for instance, the, the, Germans, the, 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 the German nation was basically destroyed at World War II. And within like less than 80 years, it has one of the most, um, you know, one of the most uh, advanced publishing industries in the world. What do you attribute this to? What, what is it that that makes this uh, specific uh, publishing industry special? That's a tough question for me to, a to answer because I'm not German. <laughs> I didn't grow up here, so it's a little bit tough for me to answer. But my feeling is that um, books are just very special for the um, German culture, for um, the way also that we are, that the Germans are brought up. Books have a very special place. In, in, in the lives of people here. And that's why they think it is so important. Um, and that's why we even have um, a law fixing the prices. I don't, I don't know if everybody knows about this, but a book costs the same no matter where you buy it in Germany. You can buy it in Cologne, for example, for 20 euros, or you can buy it in a really small town in Bavaria someplace and it will cost 20 euros there too. And this is a system that I believe, I'm not sure about this one, but I think it started in the 1888 already. So that's been going for a long time. And originally it was just an agreement between booksellers and publishers that, that this net price was there, this fixed price, and it has become a law. I'm not exactly sure when it got to be a law here in Germany, but it is. So that's something also, that just guarantees that we could have a lot of bookshops also. And if you have a lot of bookshops, then it's a lot easier to buy the books because you see them more often. They're more present for you too. If you can't see it, you can't buy it. So. Wow, this, this seems like a really good system. I, I hope a lot of us, I'm sure a lot of uh, people <laughs> on the continent would have loved to have a system like that. Would, or don't you think, Ophili? Of course. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, yeah, so Philly, how, I mean, like, the, the system is broken, but how are people getting books anyway? If, if, the, if the system is broken, how am I getting a book when I'm sitting in Nairobi? What are the ways that people are getting their books to pu from publishers to, to the readers currently? Uh, so what, what we have right now is publishers drive their distribution. Um, so like I said before, I was a self-publisher before I became um, I founded Okada Books. And basically you just, you get your book and your publishing industry manually sets up a distribution system. They pick the bookstores, you pick the bookstores you want to put the books in. So you're sort of in charge of it. There is not a strong, say like a distributor where you just have an agreement, give it to him and they distribute it across. 
um, the country. Or also where we don't have so many bookstores. I forget the number off the top of my head, um, but the you, you don't have so many bookstores. So you find that some publishers to sort of navigate the problem, put their books in pharmacies um, or supermarkets. So they, they negotiate with the chains or fast food joints and put them at the front of those fast food joints. So that's how some of the publishers are sort of bypassing the issue. But by and large, it's not yet um, evolved to a very scalable solution. Um, I, I know that um, Nigeria is quite famous for its its um, its film industry, um, and uh, there are a lot of films coming out just as much as books. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason why maybe the, the 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 publishing or writing industry hasn't tried to use the same model as the film people? Um, it would be a little bit different because the 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 film industry, for example, they are not selling DVDs. Um, neither is the music industry selling um, CDs. Um, what the film industry is doing, and, and Jason Joker has done a phenomenal job with this, with, with Iroko, but he has sort of taken it upon himself to sort of aggregate all the Nollywood content and put them on his channel and push it out, out like that. But it, it's not a model that the publishing industry can quote unquote replicate. Um, because of piracy issues and we, it's just a different model um let me just put it that way because the movie industry is not selling physical dvds you're just sort of distributing it through channels um through netflix and and things like that so it's a little bit um different i would say wow so it's a it's a different model um uh, Lena, the, the, the question I want to have for you is uh, the system seems really, really, uh, really well designed. So if somebody who's on the continent of Africa and they want to get into that, the, they want to get their book to be in the system, what do they? What would they need to do? If, if they want to get the, um, the African book in our system as, as, yes, a, foreign, as a foreign language book. Yes, yeah, yes. I've, I've published my book with uh, Farafina or or any mm -hmm. other publishers, and but now I want my book to be also sold in Germany. It looks like it's a very lucrative market. What are the opportunities? Oh, I'm not sure um, because um, we have so many publishers here in Germany. Um, I'm not sure how big the market for the foreign language book would be. Um, that would be a problem because if there is not enough market um for the book then they won't distribute it here because they you know you, you do have to have um, a book that will be sold to be put into the system so i'm not sure um if it would be possible to get a book in the foreign language there are some english books i'm not sure which country they're from if they're from germ uh from uk or from america where they come from there are some english books that you can order here but i'm not sure exactly there are a few um companies that were specialized on doing this um i'm not sure how 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 active they are right now because of the internet also um so i'm not sure i don't think it would be very easy to get into this the wholesaler uh, seller system here in germany with your foreign language book i'm sorry oh, okay. so I, I guess i need to find somebody to translate my book to and translate uh, it and then once it's translated you have a better chance of uh, of, of getting That's, the system that's the way I would go if I wanted to get my book um, distributed in Germany. Then I would try and I would um, first I would try and find an agent who would represent me to get my book um, sold to a German publisher who would then would translate it and then sell it in German on the German market. That's the way I would go. Yeah. Well, I'm just finishing with that idea. How many books would you would would be constitute um, a bestseller? Like if I'm if I'm selling a is it a thousand ten thousand uh, what it's is the more. number is for bestseller in Germany? It, it, that's different. It depends on if we're talking about a book about fiction, then you can have 
50,000, or are we talking about um, academic books? Then it's a lot less. So it all depends on what kind of um, book we're talking about. Are we talking about hardcovers? Are we talking about paperbacks? So that that would depend on, on these criteria. And it also depends a little bit about um, what time of the year it is, too, because there are certain times um, when more books are bought also. Towards Christmas, for example, book sales go up really high because that's when people are buying books to give them as presents. Um, so that's the, then you have to sell more, more, more books to just get onto the bestseller list. So I can't really um, can't really answer that question with a, a certain number, but um, in the fiction range, it's a lot more than it is in the academic. Uh, you said fifty thousand. Even more sometimes. Hmm? Wow. Ophelia, yeah, let's get you in here. Because huh? we have, um, you know, I think, I, I don't know, do you know, Dan Brown, for example, his books, or Frank Schetzing, um, that's a German author that you maybe have heard of. Um, he sells lots and lots of books, too. Hmm? Wow. Ophelia, we want to get you in here. I mean, like, you, you, you noticed that there was a broken distribution system. Which is why you set up your the company that it set up. And tell us a little bit about Okada and how it's actually solving that problem. How it's supposed to solve that problem. Okay, so essentially what we did with Okada Books was create a system that removed all the publishing bureaucracy. Because um, what happened was that publishing started becoming a luxury item where only the rich could publish their book. Um, because when you look at the economics of skills in Nigeria, ISBN is expensive. Um, printing your book is expensive, distributing your book is expensive. So even though you had the skill set, um, you, 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 you couldn't afford to do it. Um, so it was only basically the rich that were getting published or the ultra, ultra um, talented. Um, so what we did was to say, look, let's remove all the unnecessary steps in publishing and let us just simplify it and allow somebody just publish an ebook on their mobile device. Um, you don't necessarily need to have an ISBN number um, you don't need to have um, a book printed out and distributed everywhere. You can just do everything um, digitally. So you get your book out much um, faster. But more importantly, we also worked on our payment systems that allowed the user in Nigeria to sell their books internationally and locally and then get remitted directly in the local currency with minimal loss to um, their money versus the original system where if you're a Nigerian author and you put your book on Amazon, when you wanted to get your money back, after you've gone through all that hassle, you then had to get like a special credit card that charge you an exuberant um, percentage fee. So we simplified all that um, process. It made it easy for people to publish and distribute their book and made it in such a way that anybody with a cell phone and a want for books could just pick up their phone um, and download a card of books and download any book they want. And currently we have about 40,000 plus books on our platform um, over the, the years of existence. Um, and even though I feel that we haven't yet scratched the surface, what gives me joy is that I see authors that come and request their um, monthly withdrawals and they're able to use it to support their family, pay school fees, pay health fees. And that really, um, it touches my heart because I, I feel that it's seven of purpose, but I do believe that it can do more. You're telling me that there are people on your platform who are making enough money that they're able to support families. I mean, how much are, how much are people making on your platform? Um, so you have some of the really top bestsellers that I would say, I was speaking dollar term, make about like $3,000, $4,000 a year um, from their books. Um, and when you look at the Nigerian system, that's a lot of money. <laughs> For, for books and and then you have others that are just making like maybe a thousand dollars two thousand dollars um here and there so it's not like they're using it to support an entire family but they're using it to pay um little bills here and there and they don't have to do much you just publish your book put it on the platform you tell people about it you're not running from bookstore to bookstore or trying to navigate complex distribution systems and road networks you're just sitting on your home laptop or your mobile device, writing your stories, and people are just consuming all over the world. 
So what are the opportunities for people from other parts of the continent or other parts of the world to get into your system? Is it close to Nigeria or is it for, is it an open system? It's an open system, but if you know, one of the frustrations operating in the African market is that it's easier for you to send money to, from Nigeria to America than it is for you to send money from Nigeria to Ghana. And Nigeria and Ghana are next to each other, right? Um, so we've looked at trying to set up um, in Kenya, where we use M-Pesa um, as a payment gateway and allow Kenyan auto. It's just too complicated. Um, you know, you have to register a company there. You have to do this. You have to do that. And it's just not seamless. And we're facing, facing the same problem with Ghana. So in terms of scaling um, across the continent, we can do it. But it's not going to come until we have the African continent sort of breaks down these barriers that they've put for themselves. Um, I'll give you an example when I say barriers. Like in Nigeria, we have a GT bank, right? The same orange building, the same everything. In Ghana, you have the same GT bank. But if you travel from Nigeria to Ghana, you go to that GT bank, they don't know you. It's like, it's the same bank, but they, they don't know you. So that is part of the frustration. And I feel like it's one of the reasons why we haven't expanded. Um, a lot of people are trying to solve that problem. I know Flutterwave um, is trying to see if they can um, break down that, but it's it's tough, um, to be honest. Your easier is better if you're in America. You can sell your book to Nigerians <laughs> than if you're in, in Kenya or Ghana um, to use Okada books, and that, that's quite ironic. Well, that's, that's very really... ironic. <laughs> Lena, do you have any questions for Ophelia? Actually, I, I think it's amazing what Ophelia does, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm very, um, very um, excited about it, too. Um, have you actually even thought about also offering um, the possibility for the authors to have their books also printed? Not just, um, not just have an ebook, have that mobile book, but also have the ability to print them if they want to. Maybe like in smaller copies or something like that. Yes, we've explored with a few options like that. Um, on the continent, we try to work with local printers, um, mm -hmm. but it, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't gain traction um, yeah. because for the authors, there's just going to be, you, you need the capital to pay for your initial, initial books. Um, mm -hmm. We, however, have had conversation with, with Amazon to tie into their print-on-demand services where the author in um, Nigeria would publish their book um, and format it for printing, and then put it on Amazon print on delivery with Okada Books as a, a, a middleman to serve all the authors. And the book would just, whenever it's printed, it will, it will be printed in Japan, Germany, US. And it's something that the, the team is working on, but we haven't yet um, firmed up or finalized. But that's a great okay. question. Yeah, I, I think that would be also a great um, opportunity too for the um, authors then to be able to have their book, to really have it in your hand, uh, so. Exactly, yeah. expand, their, yeah. expand their market um, size and user base. Yeah. Lena, yeah. Um, one of the things that was really interesting for me when I was trying to get a guess for this, uh, for this is that apparently the German... <laughs> Nobody wants to speak English, that's why. <laughs> partly because of that, partly because of that, partly because of uh, the distribution system in Germany, apparently it's changed quite a bit in the last decade or two. Do you want to speak a little bit to that? I mean, it's not the same system, especially with the introduction of the digital. Yeah. Um, in Germany, it's also, it's not like Nirvana for booksellers here in Germany. Um, it is also difficult because um, even though books are still um, very special here in Germany, there are other things that are also special. So the, the, the focus of people is also going away from books sometimes. So, so the market is um, very, um, um, uh, I don't know, they, the, the, the booksellers are fighting with each other for the market to um, be able to sell the books. So we also have um, chains here in Germany too. We just don't have independent booksellers. We also have chains like um, Barnes and Nobles in the US and stuff like that. And these chains are growing. 
Um, there's no doubt about it. They're also growing here in Germany and taking over lots of these independent bookseller stores, especially when the booksellers decide to go um, into retirement and are looking for somebody to take over their bookstore. Then a lot of times the chains will be taking over. So that's something that's a little bit difficult because um, then you have um, the negotiations because of the price, how much um, percent re um, re rebate should the, uh, the booksellers become. And if they're a chain, then they have a lot more um, possibility to get more um, discount, um, which is bad for the publisher because then there's less money for us that um, is left over. So that's something that has happened in the last years and is a little bit of a problem. But um, actually, um, because of the pandemic now, um, with bookstores having to be closed in most parts of Germany, in Berlin, they have been open the entire time, but um, in most parts of Germany, the bookstores were closed. Mm -hmm. And here we saw a revival of the independent bookstores because they have a very loyal customers and their customers said okay it's a pandemic i can't go to the bookstore but i still want to order my books from this bookstore and so that was a very special thing that has been happening for like what whatever a year now a year and a half almost and that is um and they were very creative the independent bookstores what they did with like delivering books with um with bicycles to their customers and organizing like little um, spaces where they can pick up their ordered books and in like little bags with the um, invoice in the bag and stuff like that. And it was wonderful. It's great. It's um, it made, me, made me very happy. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, yeah. I guess yeah. One, one of the rare, rare positive stories from the pandemic era. Exactly. I think um, we need to have those kind of stories too, not just everything that is like, oh, horrible, but also the good stories. And um, it seems also that um, just reading has become very important again here in Germany during the pandemic because people have maybe more time and they just don't want to sit at the, on their um, laptop all day and then read at night too. So they take out a book and read a book. So this is, has been good too, but um, we also have eBooks, of course, <laughs> um, and they are doing well too. But um, eBooks are more important, I would say, here in Germany for certain genres like romance or crimes, that kind of stuff, um, or series where you usually like, oh, I want to read all ten books from this author with this detective, and then you can read them really quick. They're on your um, iBook and stuff like that. So, yeah. Nice. yeah. What does your company Rundum's book? Um, Rundum's book. Rundum's book. Yeah. Um, that means that um, everything about the book you can talk to me about. Um, I have 10 publishers in my portfolio right now, 10 independent publishers. And for each publisher, I offer something different. Um, some publishers say we would like you to take care of these chain bookstores, for example, and that's then that's what I do for them. Other publishers say, okay, we want you to do more or less everything doing with uh, dealing with the distribution for all bookstores, including taking care of the sales representatives that um, go into the bookstores, and I do that too. And so I'm I just. Anything that I can do to help my publishers, I do. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a yeah. question for her, Philly? Oh no, it's it's just amazing how um, the, the 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 system is set up. Um, I was curious to know, in terms of your your eBooks, how do you sell them? Um, are you selling them on Amazon or Kobo? How how are you? I have not all my publishers actually do um, ebooks. Um, I would say it's about 50% right now. Yeah, about five of them do it. And we work with a distributor, an ebook distributor. I don't know. Do you know Bookwire? No, no, I don't. Okay, because I think Bookwire is also an international company. 
and we work with Bookwire together as a distributor. Bookwire um, takes care of our eBooks and also the metadata and stuff like that. And um, pushes this pushes this um, information out to the um, to the ebook sellers. Um, Amazon, of course, Cobalt, uh, all of these, and we also have something here in um, Germany called Tolino, the Tolino yeah. Alliance. I know uh, which that. Is also, yeah, it's also very special because it's an alliance of the chain booksellers with one of the wholesalers for the independent bookshops. Bookshops. So this is like. Um, a counterpart to Amazon, actually, in Germany. Mm -hmm. So it's it's an alternative. It's not that you can only go to Amazon to buy, but you can also go to Tolino. And if you are a customer, for example, from an independent bookstore around the corner, you could buy your eBooks from Tolino, and the bookstore around the corner gets a, gets a small percentage of the sales too, if if it's connected by the sales. So. Nice and and um. I had a question that jumped right out of my head. In terms of, yeah, I remember it now. In terms of um, eBooks, one of the things that I see a lot is that publishers are afraid of piracy. Um, there's this unnatural fear of piracy. At, at what has been your experience in that and how, um, for the ones that have put their books on your platform, how have they navigated that fear? Yeah. Yeah, piracy was um, a big problem right from the beginning. And I remember in the beginning, um, a lot of the publishers also wanted this digital rights management, this strong DRM. Um, that is not existent anymore. Everybody is more or less doing the, the I don't know what it's called in English, to tell you the truth, soft digital rights management. It's not as... Um, it's not strict. as hard as the strict as the strict, thank you. Not as strict as it used to be. Um, and I personally think um, I'm a realist in this um, situation. I think, you know, there are so many really smart people out there. If they want to get that book for free, they're going to get it for free. So that doesn't matter how much digital rights management you have on it, it it's going to happen. So. I'm glad you're saying that because that's one of my else was one of my frustrations for for you to get books they would make you mm -hmm. run through through ropes uh, make sure your server is secure make sure you sacrifice your blood everything just to <laughs> it's like so many requirements and after some time it, it's and the process is just long and, and like 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 I tell them is the exact thing that you said whoever wants to steal your book will um, yeah. you know it's not. A, there's nothing you can do. You, you can, I mean, they hacked into the U.S. pipeline system, you know. So, yeah. what is Amazon going to do to stop people from? Anyway, uh, I'm I'm going on a, a rant, but that, that's awesome. You know, we love to yeah. listen to those rants. We love to listen to the rants because they, they tell us a lot about the state of the the space we're in right now. I you said that you're not scratch the surface face with what you're doing, Ophidi, right now. Um, are you, are you optimistic with the, with you know with the medium and long term uh, with this with distribution on the continent? No, I'm not optimistic. Um, it, it's because I've been in it. I've been to sessions. I've sat into meetings, um, and I'm not optimistic. Um, textbooks, yeah, they will sell in the continent, um, but fictional books that are not driven by a forced contract. Um, because with ac academic books, the publisher gets the contract and students have to buy it. So publishers are interested in that because that's where the money is. Um, but by and large, when I look at, um, and again, it could just be my mindset because people look at Okada books and say, you guys are very successful. But when I started it, I dreamt bigger. I, I wanted to see something bigger. Um, where we were seven, the continent, sort of like what Pad um, has done, and I just don't feel we've we've hit that um, that space yet. So I'm not I'm not optimistic, and I'm sorry to say that I'm just being a, a, a realist. There, there are too many obstacles. Um, if a child hasn't eaten, <laughs> right, uh, he's going to prioritize food over over books. So there, there needs to be a lot of economic evolution um, where like for Nigeria, we don't have a solid middle class, right? We have upper class, we have lower class. 
and the upper class is using Amazon. <laughs> They're not interested in the catalogs because they, they can afford it. Um, the middle class is barely existing, and that's what we're trying to serve. And then you have a, a lower class that they're trying to eat, and you're telling them to buy a book, you know? So the, I, I believe that a lot of economic evolution has to come, um, and we need to break down this system where it's easy, it's easy, and I've said it before, to do business Nigeria to America, Nigeria to UK, but you can't do business easily Nigeria to Kenya, Nigeria to... Ghana. I think until we break that, our, our systems are just going to be staying in this weird place that is not exciting. You know what's really, really uh, what's really interesting for me is that um, Nigeria right now, or in the last decade, has been producing some of the best writers, some of the best, um, most innovative writers, and even not, not just the num even the volume of writers coming from Germany, from from Nigeria. Is, is actually the highest on the continent. Um, so what, what, where are these books going? What, who is buying them? Who is, how do we get to know about them? Because if there are so many books which are coming out and they're not being sold, there must be a disconnect somewhere. It's the Chino Achebe problem that I told you about, you know? Um, I personally have gone like, I don't know if you know the Paysetter series. Mm. It was really popular, in, it's popular in Kenya, it's popular in, in, in Nigeria. And I literally went to the publisher and I was like, just name your price. I, I want to buy the digital rights of it. And he, they just said, no, um, for whatever reason, you, you, you're trying to get these books and they're just like, no, no, they, they, they don't want to give it to you. There's just this fear or natural fear of piracy in Nigeria. If for example, I was registered as a US company per se, and I said my market was US or Canada, I don't think I would have seen so much friction, but you come and you say, ah, you're in Nigeria and you want to sell digital books. And all of a sudden, everybody's piracy alarm just starts ringing. Like these people are going to steal the, the, the. So we have Chimamanda Adichie, it's the same thing. It's easier to buy Chimamanda Adichie's books in Germany than it is to buy it in Lagos. It's easier to buy Chinua Achebe's books in Germany, in America than it is to buy it in his village. And until we solve that problem, or we admit that is a problem, we're just going to struggle. So all the popular Nigerians that can write, they are writing for an international audience. It's not for Nigerians, um, you know? Niger the average Nigerian doesn't know that much about Chinua Achebe or Chimamanda Adichie. It's, it's, um, it's really consumption for the Western world. That's, my, that's the reality. I could be wrong, but that's what I've observed. Do, do you think it affects the way that they write? Because if they know that their audience is not local, um, it doesn't matter. They, they just need to write it in such a way that it and it'll be you know it'll be sold alongside um, it'll be sold alongside uh, Salman Rushdie or whoever it is. So it needs to be compelling, and they don't need to worry about their local audience. Um, yeah, it, it, it could be. Again, I don't like to dabble into places that I'm not too too strong with. Um, I, I can't per se predict how, if we had a Nigerian system that was very strong or an African distribution system, how it would affect people's writing. Um, but I do know that based on your logic, James, there would be an impact because you're writing for a different audience, you're writing for a, a different reality. But if you, if you look at our authors, Chimamanda Adichie, El Nathan, a lot of these guys, after some time, they're not even living in the continent again. El Nathan is based in Germany, you know? Um, so what, is, what stories is he going to write? It's not, it's not going to write. He's probably going to try and touch on his legacy of, of Nigeria, but his reality has changed, you know? So I, I think that's the problem. It's like, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm going too long, just let me know, but it's like- No, in a, it's in a, fine. Okay, so I started in the US, right? And every Nigerians, um, we had the highest number of PhDs, masters, you know, we're, we're killing it in, in the US. But you don't see that transfer in Nigeria, right? So you can say, oh, we have the best doctors in the US, but you come to Nigeria and then it's not, you don't see it, right? So it's the same thing. And I'm setting that analogy to explain why yeah, it looks like we have the Wolesha Incas, Chino Achebe's, Chimamanda Adichie's. It's for, for the international sphere. 
when you come to Nigeria, you start realizing it's difficult for, for their books to be sold, you know? And, and, and the, the, back to your earlier question, the reason why the music industry and the, um, the movie industry has progressed is that a lot of them, like musicians in Nigeria, don't try and sell their music. They give it out for free, right? Because they realize that the market is not set up to buy your books, your, your CDs. The way they make money is through endorsements. So they give out their, their music. When it becomes popular, then Whiskey gets a Guinness um, endorsement and they pay him millions of, of dollars. You know, but you don't see that for Nigerian authors um, because nobody's willing to give Chimamanda Adichie X Y Z amount to become the face because they don't think it's they don't think for lack of a better word they don't think it's sexy. Um, you know, so authors we are we have this double edged sword that the movie industry and music industry um, doesn't have to deal with. But wouldn't it be then a possibility that the, the government um, sets up some kind of trust fund or some kind of support for authors? Um, no? <laughs> no? Let me get started with the, <laughs> let me get started with the government. I, I would get in trouble. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to get started. Like, uh, you know, we're trying to get stable electricity. <laughs> um, so uh, books are... The, the, if there are a list of like 1,000 things to do, books are number 3,751. It's not, <laughs> yeah. Lina, maybe you can talk, talk to that the government uh, involvement in the publishing industry. Is the government involved very at all in the German publishing industry? Well, like I said, we have the law with the fixed prices for books. That's something that um, went through the government and got put into a law. So that's um, something very important. And we also have, I think it's called the Ministry of Culture, I would call it in English, I guess, if you want to translate it. And um, they support, um, it gets, for example, um, prizes, money prizes. I don't have the figures in my head, but um, every year, I think it's 118 independent books shops are given prizes, money prizes for being cultural institutions and for promoting books and literature and this kind of stuff. Um, and I, there's also a prize, not only just for the bookshops, the independent bookshops, there's also a prize um, for in Germany. I think it's been it's the third time it's been um, given out now for independent publishers too. Um, also money, of course, um, to support them, to support their programs because um, the cultural um, importance of what publishers and bookshops do has been seen. And that's why the cultural ministry has brought up these, these prizes, these money prizes. So. Oh, wow. So we have on one, on one side where the government doesn't exist for your industry. Yeah. And on the other side, we have an industry, a government that actually gives money as, as because of the cultural significance. So that's a, that's a really interesting thing, um, Ophelia. Do you think the, that we'll ever, we'll ever get there in Nigeria and the rest of the continent? Um, like I said, that's why when you asked me about Tomisk, I said no. Um, because I do feel there are so many layers, but uh, to be to be honest, um, I, I have seen the Kenyan um, book space, and I would say I'm more optimistic for Kenya. Um, beyond Nigeria, Kenya is the one that I'm more familiar with on the continent. Uh, I think I've worked with is it Lawrence? I forget his last name, but the the head of your Kenyan association. Because I do believe the government is is doing a lot um, in terms of directly funding. Um, book interest. Um, my, my main criticism is that the focus seems to be more on textbooks um, versus fictional books, but I do know that the government is playing a very active role in, in, in terms of book distribution in, in Kenya. And, and, reg and regardless of the country, if the government makes it a priority, um, the book industry will, will, will try. Um, and, and it's just not, there are too many, there are more important issues. There's health, there's electricity. There are so many issues before we get to to books. Um, so yeah. So basically, what you've told me today, Ophelia, is that um, if if I if I really wanted to invest in you know in distributing books in Nigeria or or other parts of the continent, I, I really do don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's not a thing that you want to get into at the moment. 
physically it's it will be difficult physically it will be difficult um like you look at jumia for example they had to build out their um, delivery system um, they had to hire their delivery system had to build out the entire network conga the same thing um and even when they did that they were only servicing um mega city centers so you have a very um premature um road network and distribution um system and it can get there um you know but it, it would take some time but it would take willpower from people and from the government um so that government again government again uh, i'm seeing somebody here commenting that you know there's um there's money for you know translating books from german into other languages and um uh, lena do you want to speak to that a bit or um, I actually don't know very much about that part of the business, about the um, translations. <laughs> so I don't know. I know that um, there are there that there are funds for translations um, from German into English. I, I had um, read about this a little bit, and also for translations from other languages into German. But um, I think it's um, the Goethe Institute. We also have. Um, throughout the world um, to promote the German literature and German culture. Um, but I don't know much about that, so I can't say that much about it. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, um, Ophelia, I know you need to leave very soon. So my, 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 my question was going to be about optimism, but you don't seem to have a lot of it. <laughs> Oh, I mean, what, what do you want me to say? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just being... What do you say, I mean, James? So at this moment, you don't seem to have a lot of optimism. But what you can tell me is, you know, within your Okada system, um, who are some of the writers who are, you know, making those $3,000? Maybe we can check them, try and check them out. Oh, okay. That's, that's a good question. One of the things that really surprised me with um, Okada Books was when we discovered the Hausa um, local writing industry. Um, because when we created it, it was just for English books. And then we just all of a sudden just started getting traffic from the northern part of Nigeria. And there were these authors that were writing um, romance novels in their Hausa language. And it just blew up. Um, and I think one of the reasons why it blew up is that that, that part of the country, um, compared to like the South, the Hausa is like their first language in English second versus the Southern part of Nigeria, where it's English first and then Yoruba and Igbo second, and it's an iffy second. But Hausa is like ingrained, but it's very conservative. So talking about sex, romance is like a no-no. But with Okada books um, and the niftiness of it, just have a mobile device, download the yeah. book. We were we just got this huge amount of readers reading house of romance novels and I think that that was the that was the most exciting part of it to to be honest to discover that that niche of people and then you have people like Sally Dazier um, she's not published um, and she's just writing and some of what she's written has been um, they've put it on on TV on YouTube um, videos so yeah it, it's it's exciting to be honest and it's one of those things where um i guess my 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 big dream for kata books sometimes blocks me from understanding the reality of what we've achieved um but th those are the two examples i'll give just the normal self-published author that has never published a book doesn't have a book deal that is making money and having her book turn into a, a web series and people that in the northern part of Nigeria that nobody would have ever given them a chance to be published, uh, publishing the book on a platform and making real money uh, it blows my mind. I think that's wow. great too, that they're able to do it in their own language. That's, that's amazing. Great. Exactly. Beautiful. Good job. I think, we, I think we need to give that information to people like Ngugi because uh, those who talk about, you know, writing in your own language. Yeah. Ungugi Wationgo, is that who you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Awesome guy. Anyway, I, I have to run now. I really do appreciate um, the, the time. Thank you for um, th this interview. Nice to meet you, Lena. Um, hopefully we, nice we cross paths later. I'm sure I'm going to see you, James. Um, 
<laughs> we'll see once this COVID-19 stops. I'm sure we'll see ourselves at a literary festival somewhere. Or in Frankfurt at the book fair. Oh yeah, I was meant to go last year. Yeah. I, was, I was meant to go to Frankfurt. I was meant to go to Italy and where Morocco and COVID-19 <laughs> just killed everything. <laughs> Oh, but wow. it, it'll all come again. Don't worry about it. Awesome. Take care. Take Thank care. you so much. You have a nice one. I will. Lena, did you plan to go anywhere but COVID messed you up? <laughs> yes. Um, to tell you the truth, the big part of my job has always been going from bookstore to bookstore and talking about books and selling books and all over Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and this has more or less stopped because of COVID-19. And everything I do is via Zoom, FaceTime, what, uh, whatever, or on the telephone these days. So it kind of messed up everything, yes. And my personal life anyway, because yeah, I have family in the United States still, so. So you're stuck in your room talking on Zoom. Um, I, I, would you but like to tell Nigeria. us? Nigeria, <laughs> Nigeria, Kenya. Uh, would you like to talk to us a little bit about the authors that your publishers are, are, pub are publishing? Because you know, I'm sure there may be somebody who writes in, who is interested in German. Uh, so, who are some of the right the authors that you are interested in? You, you have been pub uh, distributing. Well, you know, maybe I, I do it a little bit different. Maybe um, I'll show you what our because um, I had talked about the fact that we have programs that are come out twice a year and they come out very old fashioned in these catalogs uh, mm -hmm. where the books are presented. And this is one of my, um, my publishers. Uh, I can't figure out where the camera is. It's one of my new okay. ones. It's a, das Program. I'm seeing Das Program something. Das Program. Das Erste Program. Das Erste Program. Yes because this is um, a new publishing house and we're coming out in July with our very first book and this publishing house. And I'm very excited about this one because it's a very young um, guy um, who lives in Berlin who used to work for a big um, German publishing house and has decided to do his own independent publishing house. And that's something that I just love. I think that's great. So. That sounds really exciting. Are there any, any people who are writing in English or it's all German? Um, I only distribute um, German books, actually. Uh, except for one company. This is um, Ariella Verlag. Mm -hmm. This is actually um, a woman who grew up in um, Germany, but also in New York. Um, she is uh, Jewish, and her her publishing house. Um, she she founded the publishing house to promote to promote Jet Judaica in Germany, so that the Germans learn more about um, what it means to be Jewish and what the different Jewish holidays are about and stuff like that. And she has books that are also in English. She does sometimes German um, copies and English copies, but otherwise, I only work with German books. That's why it's so. Because I because I've realized that, you know, on the continent, English and French are the big languages. Um, what, 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 I didn't understand the question, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, so you, you only have one book in English, so apart from anything in French, because on the continent, it's English and French. It's not just English. No, no, we really only have German books because the German market is enough for us, and if we want to... Um, we want the books to be um, brought out in French. We we sell the rights to the books to a French publishing house, and they bring out the book then in French. That's oh, right. and if somebody in France wants it, they they sell you the rights for the German. Okay, I see how exactly. this exactly. That's the way it goes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe we should consider that on this continent. You know, maybe I buy rights in Kenya from Okada Books, and uh, and somebody I I sell rights, but uh, but it's. Um, it's it's really fascinating, and I and I want us to end our discussion here because um, uh, I think we've we've really gotten deep into it, and um, they, I'm sure there's a lot more to say, but without our other guests, I think we should uh, call it quits. I want to thank you so much for joining us, thank you, and I also James. want to say thank you to Ophili who joined us um, earlier. Would you like to maybe like uh, give a final comment or final remark? 
Yeah, um, I thought this was extremely interesting for me because I really don't know much about the book business in um, on the African continent, and it, I wasn't aware that is that is so difficult. Apparently, the way I understand it, to um, work economically between the countries on the African continent. That's I, I, that amazed me. Um, I I would have thought that it's more like the European continent where everything is more or less giving and give, taking and giving and everything is connected somehow. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought that was very, very interesting. And I thought it's great what the, uh, what he's doing with his eBooks. Um, great. I love it when people read. So great. Thank Thanks you so for much. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful. So uh, those of you who are listening out now or later, thank you for listening this far. I want you to have a nice morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.